In October 2018, Hackney Council unanimously passed a motion pledging to raise awareness of rare and less common cancers, making it one of the first areas in the country to do so. We are making it our mission to ensure a better future for those living with these cancers. People living with rare and less common cancers need to hear a clear message that their lives matter too and that no one living in Hackney has to face cancer alone. So cancer is one of the biggest challenges a person can face in their life and it has many consequences. And we've all heard of the big four, breast, colorectal, lung and prostate. But there are over 200 kinds of cancer. Many of the less common or rare cancers um, have particular additional burdens um, along with the diagnosis, not least a lack of awareness, and then finding the right care and support. And even at that point, they get referred to secondary care for further investigations that can lead to an average of three visits over 17 months. So in neuroendocrine tumours, it may be that from the first inkling there's something not quite right, to accurate diagnosis can take between three and five years. So I'm a GP in Hackney, but I also have a role as the City in Hackney Cancer Lead. This role is to try and improve the care of patients with cancer in any way possible. So that will involve education within primary care, but also liaising between GPs and hospital colleagues to try and improve the communication and the journey of the patients. Much of this role is funded by the charity Macmillan and their aim is to improve the experience of patients living with and beyond cancer in any way possible. Around 17% are those considered rare cancers. So although each individual diagnosis may be very small numbers, that group make up quite a big proportion of our, of our cancer work. So once diagnosed with a rare or uncommon cancer, where do people go? And this is another place where access to expertise can be problematic. Finding the right expert with the right knowledge and um, skills to about the disease, but also its impacts and effects on you, both physically and emotionally, may can be difficult. Again, in neuroendocrine tumours, we have in the UK 12 accredited expert centres of excellence, three in London alone. And they are teams that have had a special interest in this disease and actually formulated an expert clinic with the resources such as the specialist um, tests and investigations, scans, um, access to the treatments that you need, but more importantly the the plan, the agreed moving forward in helping somebody to live as well as possible with their condition for whatever length of time that may be. For those with the more aggressive form, that time might not be as long as others, but for many, they can live for years with the right support. So personalised care is a real key theme that runs right through the new um, NHS long-term plan um, and particularly um, for those with cancer as cancer can move for some to more of a long-term condition and are living with and beyond that first active treatment phase. It can involve a number of hospitals and therefore actually identifying with one key individual um, to go to in terms of um, support during that phase can be a bit problematic. We also know that for those with um, rare or less common cancers, they can feel a bit more isolated than others, given that actually support groups are, tend to be quite general, and to really find someone to relate to with their cancer can be difficult. People with a, a rare or less common cancer, they should be talked to um, about their holistic needs, and they should also have regular cancer care reviews with their GP. So clearly the GP won't have all the answers, they won't be able to sort every problem themselves, but we're very fortunate, um, particularly in Hackney, that we have a, a huge wealth of experience and resources to hand um, others that we can ask for assistance and help. Um, we have an excellent social prescribing service. This is a group where patients can be referred to meet with with an individual who can just signpost them to areas where they may need help and that might be through exercise schemes or psychology or uh, help with finances. The GP has 
lots of, of different avenues, things that they can use locally, uh, even, if they, even if they don't necessarily have the answers themselves. Well, this, my diagnosis was about 10 years ago. Um, I, there wasn't as much support. And I vaguely knew about this Net Patient Foundation website, but uh, yeah, I was on my own, really. I felt very alone initially. Um, once you're passed over to the hospital, you're sort of on your own a little bit. Mm. So there is some support at the hospital, they, um, but I did search for help. I needed a bit of counselling uh, and I eventually got that from Macmillan. The um, uh, events that are put on by the Patient Foundation, um, educational events um, and certain hospitals has been supportive and yes, we've learnt um, more uh, by doing that but we had to really search them out to start I find with. those immensely uh, useful and meeting other people and even having questions for them when they've gone through the treatment before. Sometimes you get a better, more uh, constructive answer than you might from even the nurse. It's nice to be able to talk about how you're feeling with somebody who has a vague idea even if it's not exactly the same. Okay, what I find really useful is going to the uh, support group at the Royal Free. Uh, there's only about three uh, uh, and other groups of or, or, uh, specifically neuroendocrine tumour patients where you learn what's up to date, progress, uh, ways to cope, meeting other people with them and, and I've gained immensely from that. And, uh, you realise you're not alone yes. um, and it's, um, it helps and um, where you uh, might Google something uh, and uh, get some out of date information or some really terrifying information, um, it helps to put that sort of thing into uh, context uh, rather than being uh, well misled down a rabbit hole really. Um, so you need to use Dr Google with um, Care. It can be useful, can't it? Mm. But, but it, 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 initially it's a very lonely place being told you've got a rare cancer uh, and finding out that there's other people with that rare cancer and other rare cancers mm. uh, is heartwarming in a way. It's, yeah. I'm not alone anymore. You can't see pain, but it, it, it can be all-encompassing if you feel mm. it. Um, I'm not averse to taking painkillers at all. I'm not going to be a martyr. Um, but I do try and take my mind off it with uh, things that I've learned since diagnosis, of, like mindfulness, which I find quite useful when I'm having scans. It's sort of you can send your mind away somewhere else. Yep. That's good. Or even reading a book. I'm always in the library getting a book to just get into a book and take my mind off it. Um, and, and that is uh, just coping mechanisms to, to, to get you into uh, what we call our new normal really, it's living with pain. It's not fun living with, with cancer for the rest of your life, There's no, nobody's ever going to say you're cured, uh, but it's a life. Yep, it's what we've been given, we have to get on with it, one way or another. With support you can, with support you can. So living with rarer and common cancers um, can be challenging and that is very complex. But there are some positives. Charities supporting and representing rare and uncommon cancers are being involved in future planning. With the new cancer plan, um, there are plans to incorporate addressing the particular needs and concerns around rare and uncommon cancer care. Hackney Council is one of the first councils in the UK to actually incorporate rare and uncommon cancers in their health policy and have already taken steps to increase awareness across the borough. What we would like to see is other councils following this example to better serve their population.